Hi, 你们好。My name is Zhou Yi. Zhou is my last name. Yi my first. I am 91 years old and I am bored. Beside my beloved cat, I have no one to talk to. Most of my friends have passed on or no longer capable of communicating. Then I thought, why not find new friends to talk to? So here I am. My hope is that they'll come and listen to what I have to say. But what is there that an old woman can tell you that would interest you? The first thought was perhaps I can help you to learn the Chinese language. But after reviewing a few videos on YouTube, I was quite impressed with the many highly qualified linguists already online. So what else can I talk about? Then I remembered that in my younger days, I loved to tell stories to my siblings, stories from the books I read. Perhaps that's what I'll do. There were so many interesting stories where I grew up in Shanghai in the 30s and 40s. Plus, there are plenty of stories from Chinese history and literature, which had never been told outside of China. A ton of resources for me to dig into. So why don't I do just that? And that's exactly what I shall do. To start, I have decided to name my talk Shanghai Jing. Shanghai Jing is a title of an ancient classic book. The three words Shan, Mountain, Hai, Xi, Jing, Classic. To translate it in English, Classic of Mountains and Seas. But the book is not limited to mountains and seas. Like an ancient encyclopedia, it covers no limit of topic. History, geography, literature, art, legends, religion, astronomy, botany, zoology, marine plants and marine biology, social customs, medicine and technology. But foremost, the book could be the first published work of fantasy fiction with illustrations. The writers of San Hejin are untraceable. It's believed to be a collection of many writers' works over hundreds of years from roughly 476 BCE to 210 BCE, between the time of the Warring States and up through the early years of Han Dynasty, where it was first published. Because the book contains so many topics, Shanghai Jing has become a common term for anyone telling a fantastic story. When I was growing up in Shanghai, whenever someone told a story or reported an incident that sounded unbelievable, people would then say, Come on, don't make up stories. Are you telling Sanhedrin or what? This is why I think Sanhedrin is appropriate title for my channel. Like Sanhedrin, I shall recount whatever story or discover whatever topic pop into my mind, whether ancient or contemporary, historical or legendary, real or hearsay, Chinese or of other origin or even perhaps personal tale. I hope you will enjoy them. Before I start, please bear in mind, I am no historian nor a scholar. I am just a 90 years old who likes to chat. Now, where to start? How about a little title with a big subject? To start my little tale over the many years since retirement, 
I have had a lot of time to look back to my past. I realize that most of my life I spent pursuing the so-called American dream. During those years, I was so busy chasing the rainbow, there was no time to reflect on the real meaning of life. It seems that was stupid of me, wasting so many years of my life on all those trivial pursuits, none of which means much to me now. But after a few more years, I saw my past in a different light and began to ask myself, were those years really a waste? Then I remember my mother, who would often mumble to herself remorsefully, if only I knew then what I know now. I would have done many things differently. She was then in her late 50s. After years of dealing with the complex Shanghai society of the 30s through the 40s. It is only now that I understand what she meant. If she was still alive, I would say to her, no mother, it was not a loss, it was a gain. For the past is a journey that has added up to your life. You only know what you know now because of those years. No matter how wasteful you think they were, or how many wrong choices you made, the past is a journey we must all take to find our way out of the misty woods. With this revelation, I recall a Shan tale. You may not be familiar with the Chinese word Chan, but I'm sure you know the word is Zen. Zen is a Japanese word for Chan. As you may know, Chan adopted Buddhism from India during the Tang Dynasty, about the 7th century. Chan is one sect of Buddhism. Like most religions, Buddhism developed and modified in China on its own course to suit China's distinct culture and ways of life. Chan's school of thought became one of the most influential parts of Chinese culture, especially among the intellectuals and artists. You can easily detect it in architecture, landscaping, painting, calligraphy, and even in cuisine. And this is not only in China, but also in the neighboring states like Korea and Japan. Korean adopted Shan from China in the 8th century, Japanese much later in the 13th century, during the Song Dynasty. Okay, now here is our little Shan tale with a big subject. A man walked day and night to reach the mountain top. He went to the master and beseeched him. Master, master, please enlighten me. I come to seek the meaning of life. The master nodded in silence. For hours they sat, from morning to noon and noon to evening. The man waited and waited. He waited eagerly and patiently. The master had not uttered a word. Suddenly he saw the master stand up and was about to leave. He called out, Master, don't leave. You haven't enlightened me yet. The master replied, Oh, I'm sorry, but I've got to go. Nature calling. What do you wish to know? I wish to know the meaning of life. But can't you see? I've got to go. You see, in life, even such a small task, I must do it myself. Indeed, no one can tell you what the meaning of life is. Like the Master says, you must find it yourself. Well, I hope you like my little tale. I thank you for listening in to my Shanghai Jin. Remember to tune in for my next episode coming soon. Take care. Bao zhong.